In this lecture, we cover two topics, wave energy and wave power. There are two wave energy components, potential energy in element dx due to displacement of water surface. So if we consider a wave and take element dx, we can derive equation for potential energy component. I'm not going to show you a derivation. I will show you a final equation for potential energy in the next slide. And another component is kinetic energy for a small element of fluid due to water particle movement. Similarly, if we consider small element of fluid dz dx, we can derive equation for kinetic energy component, which I'm going to show you final equation on the next slide. There are two contributions into the total wave energy, potential energy due to displacement of water surface and also kinetic energy due to water particle movement. Considering wave with wavelength lambda and also considering unit crest width, we can derive equations for potential energy over one wavelength and kinetic energy over one wavelength and over full depth. These two equations will be the same. I don't show you complex derivations, but for both these contributions, equations would be 1 divided by 4 multiplied by specific weight, multiplied by amplitude in power 2, multiplied by wavelengths, and this would be potential energy over one wavelength or kinetic energy over one wavelength and over full depth. Therefore, the total wave energy over one wavelength and p unit crest width would be given as potential energy plus kinetic energy. Or if you add them together, it's 1 divided by 2, multiplied by specific weight, multiplied by amplitude in power 2, multiplied by wavelengths. Substituting instead of amplitude, wave height divided by 2, we get equation for the total wave energy over one wavelength per unit crest width as 1 divided by 8, multiply by specific weight, multiply by wave height in power 2, and multiply by wavelengths. Or we can say that the mean energy density would be equal total energy per unit C surface area. Therefore, it would be divided also by lambda. Therefore, total energy per unit C surface area is 1 divided by 8, multiplied by specific weight, multiplied by wave height in power 2. And only depends on wave height. The higher the wave, the greater the total energy per unit C surface area. Power is defined as the rate at which work is done by pressure forces. Or power can be also defined as the rate at which energy is transported. So the power of the wave per unit crest width is given by the following equation. So the wave power is equal to the mean energy flux and mean energy flux is equal to the mean energy density multiplied by group velocity. If we substitute units for each parameter, we will have units for the wave power per unit crest width as watts multiplied by meter in power minus one. So here we have EF is the mean energy flux and is defined as the product of mean energy density multiplied by group velocity. E is just the mean energy density from previous slide. And in brackets here, we have the rate at which energy is transmitted. And this is called group velocity. Parameter G here is defined as 2 multiplied by wave number multiplied by water depth and divided by hyperbolic sign. And in brackets, we have 2 kd. So this is our group velocity, which is 1 divided by 2 multiplied by wave speed. And in brackets, we have 1 plus parameter g. Let's see what the wave power would be equal to for deep water and for shallow water. For deep water, group velocity will be simplified because g is approximately equal to zero for large water depths. And therefore, group velocity would be equal half of the wave speed. 
And from here we have wave power for deep water would be equal 1 divided by 16 multiplied by specific weight multiplied by wave height in power 2 and multiplied by wave speed for deep water. In deep water, the rate at which energy is transmitted is half of the wave speed. For shallow water, we have this parameter approximately equal to 1. Therefore, group velocity would be equal to speed of the wave for shallow water. And therefore, the wave power for shallow water would be equal 1 divided by 8 multiplied by specific weight multiplied by wave height in power 2 and multiplied by wave speed for shallow water. So in shallow water, the rate at which energy is transmitted is the same as the speed of the wave. And this explains why wave height increases as the waves enter shallow water. And this is because more energy is transmitted relative to the wave speed in shallow water than in deep water. And this is called wave shoaling. The wave power per unit crest width is given by the following equation. This is simplified equation since the group velocity equation is simplified because parameter g for deep water is approximately equal to zero. But we know that the wave speed for deep water can be expressed as gravity multiplied by wave period divided by 2 pi. Therefore, substituting this equation into equation above, we have equation for wave power for deep water. In this equation, we have some parameters which are constant, such as water density, gravity, and pi, which are shown in red. Therefore, substituting these calculations with approximately calculated value of 1000, we can express the wave power for deep water in kilowatts multiplied by meter in power minus 1. Thus, the power for deep water in kilowatts multiplied by meter in power minus 1 is approximately equal to the square of wave height multiplied by wave period. On this slide, I would like to summarize all the equations for wave pressure, wave energy, and wave power. Starting with wave pressure. Wave pressure is equal dynamic pressure plus hydrostatic pressure below still water level. And the maximum wave pressure occurs when we have wave crest passing above particular point. And wave crest is when water surface elevation is equal to wave amplitude or half of wave height. Total energy density per unit C surface area is calculated as 1 divided by 8 multiplied by specific weight and multiplied by wave height and power 2. So it only depends on wave height. The wave power per unit crest width or the rate at which energy per unit crest width is transported is equal to mean energy flux or mean energy density multiplied by group velocity and group velocity can be estimated as shown in this equation and for deep water the wave power per unit crest width is simplified and in kilowatts multiplied by meter in power minus one is equal to wave height in power two multiplied by wave period and for Shallow water, the wave power per unit crest width is equal as shown on this slide, or 1 divided by 8, specific weight multiplied by wave height in power 2, square root, gravity multiplied by water depth.